coronavirus pandemic sucks. One of the ways we can get through it is with widespread testing, but because of limiting reagents, we can't just rely on one type of test. So scientists all over the world are developing tests to detect viruses. In this cool paper, scientists report on a new method to detect viruses using something called DNA nanoswitches, which are pieces of DNA that switch their shape depending on whether the virus is present. And the nano part, well, that's just sexy scientific lingo for really stinking tiny. DNA nanoswitches are really cool, and they work by taking advantage of some of the unique physical properties of DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA are both made out of building blocks called nucleotides. There are four types of nucleotides, A, T, C, and G. That's for DNA. RNA uses a U instead of a T. Each DNA and RNA molecule is made of a long string of those nucleotides. The order of nucleotides is different for each molecule. We call that the sequence. That's what makes you you and me me. Your order of nucleotides is why you have brown eyes. Or are they green? It's hard to tell from here. So one of the really cool and important properties of nucleotides is that this part of them, it's called the base, is kind of sticky. It forms hydrogen bonds with the base of another nucleotide. But the binding is specific. G only pairs with C and A only pairs with T, or U. This is important because DNA is double-stranded. If there's an A on one strand, there's a T on the opposite strand. So we call these strands complementary because their nucleotide sequences are matched. They complement each other. And since they're complementary, they bind to each other, and that's what makes DNA a double-stranded molecule. Now, RNA is single-stranded, and that's an important part of how the DNA nanoswitch works. The DNA nanoswitch is one long strand of DNA with lots of short, complementary strands of DNA bound to it. But two of the short DNA pieces, they actually have a tail that's complementary to the genome of a specific virus. See, some viruses, like the novel coronavirus, Zika virus, and HIV, they all store their genetic information in RNA instead of DNA. Since the viral RNA is single-stranded, all its sticky bases are ready to bind to a complementary sequence. So if you mix the viral RNA with the DNA nanoswitch, the viral RNA binds to the complementary sequences on the nanoswitch. So when the viral RNA binds to the DNA nanoswitch, the DNA nanoswitch, it changes shape. Of course, DNA nanoswitches are a lot smaller than umbrellas. So the way that the scientists see the shape change is using a technique called gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis separates pieces of DNA by size, but it turns out that when the DNA nanoswitch is bound to RNA, it runs more slowly in the gel. It's like if I try to push an umbrella through a swimming pool, it's pretty fast, unless I open it, and then it's pretty slow. The same is true for DNA nanoswitches. When they're bound to RNA, they run slower in the gel, so it makes a band that's higher and easy to see. It turns out that the hanging out tails of the DNA nanoswitch are super easy and cheap to design, and they can be used to detect different types of viruses. The scientists who published this paper showed that different nanoswitches could detect Zika virus, dengue virus, and even the novel coronavirus. I think DNA nanoswitches are really cool, and they're cool in part because of the way they capitalize on the properties of DNA and RNA. And they're not going to solve the coronavirus pandemic, but DNA nanoswitches may become one of the tools in our coronavirus toolkit. Until then, I'll see you with my mask on.